Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, January 23rd, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, a couple interesting updates today. First of all, we got updates from Apple. Apple released updates for all of its operating systems, including some older versions of operating systems. For example, for Mac OS, going back to Monterey or 12.7, and for iOS and iPad OS, going back to 15.8. The reason we see these updates for older operating systems are in one part some of these older already exploited vulnerabilities and that's in particular CVE 2023 42916 and 42917. These WebKit vulnerabilities had been patched for more modern versions of iOS and macOS last year. Now Apple is sort of catching up with some of the older operating systems. But also for up-to-date operating systems, we do have an already exploited vulnerability that's being patched here. Again, a WebKit vulnerability, meaning that it could be exploited as you visit malicious website. Now, some of these older WebKit vulnerabilities. We also saw exploited, for example, in these uh, tickets and uh, boarding passes and such that are displayed by Apple's wallet because that's also rendered using WebKit. Overall, we have updates for 29 different vulnerabilities. At least that's my count. Always uh, easy to sort of miss one or count one double here. Update, there is nothing really need to select about these updates other than to apply them. Now, this was a feature release, not just a security release. And uh, while I usually don't talk about the new features, everybody else sort of does that. There's one security related feature that you should be aware of uh, with iOS 17.3, there is a new stolen device protection feature. You need to enable uh, this feature. And uh, what it essentially does is if your phone is in an unusual location, then you need to provide additional authentication if you try to do things like, for example, accessing the keychain. The reason it was implemented was that uh, there has been sort of a rash of iPhone thefts that uh, targeted unlocked iPhones or where an attacker would first observe you entering your unlock code and then they would steal the phone. So this prevents an attacker who has your PIN or whatever uh, passphrase or such you used to lock your phone and steals your phone. They're still not able to access a lot of the features if they're not in a usual location, which typically would be your home and your workplace. The way this sort of you know, favorite location is being determined is just uh, by the device uh, monitoring your locations and sort of trying to figure out if uh, there are certain locations that you visit a lot. That's actually something that uh, iOS has been tracking in the past and sort of has built some logic around it. It's now used for this stolen device protection feature. And this morning I noticed our honeypots picking up exploit attempts for an Atlassian Confluence data center Confluence server vulnerability that was patched last week. Uh, I mentioned this vulnerability in a podcast last week. It has a CSS score of a perfect 10. No authentication required remote code execution via object graph navigation language injection or OGNL injection. This is a very easy to exploit vulnerability. This weekend, a blog post came out that uh, contained more details about how to exploit this vulnerability. And if you look at some of the strings that we have observed so far, well, it's extremely simple uh, to actually exploit this. So you'll see likely a rash of these exploit attempts. Not sure these days how many actual Atlassian systems are still exposed in the wild. Many users have migrated to Atlassian's uh, cloud offerings, which of course had already been patched by Atlassian. And Ivanti published updated guidance regarding the vulnerability in its Connect Secure product. 
One of the issues here is that the mitigation that uh, Ivanti offered is a configuration file that updates uh, the configuration of the device. If after applying the mitigation, you are then pushing a new configuration to the device, well, uh, then that mitigation actually is being overwritten and no longer effective. So keep that in mind. Also, starting this week, according to Ivanti, you should see actual patches for at least some of the more recent versions of Ivanti Connect Secure. Older versions may have to wait until second or third week in February. And while I'm not doing a lot of IPv6 work these days, maybe I should start again because the Czech government now set an official end date for IPv4 services. The idea is that after June 6, 2020, 32, so certainly quite a few years out, the Czech Republic, at least the government websites, may no longer be reachable over IPv4 and will only offer services via IPv6. This is the first time that I've seen a government sort of officially setting an IPv4 shutdown date. Uh, there have been uh, many governments in the US here as well, where uh, there were some dates where they were supposed to start using IPv6. Pick up on some of these uh, regulations has been uh, kind of spotty, but it uh, will be interesting to see what happens with uh, this particular resolution and if uh, this will sort of uh, get some steam and maybe other larger countries are getting on the same uh, boat. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening. Uh, thanks for recommending the podcast. Remember, it's available via Amazon's uh, Alexa service. We also have it on YouTube. Well, no video, just the audio, but there are quite a few people who seem to like that. So thanks for listening. Thanks for any feedback and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.